to, uh, uh, to discuss and vote on, and then it's followed by uh, some, uh, uh, some other items, including uh, uh, a safety uh, uh, appropriation and a discussion about um, uh, reappointing our current auditors. So uh, with that, let's, let's take the town budget first. Um, can you give me the exact number we're dealing yes. with to make sure we're all? Uh, the bottom line selecting budget is 12,408,752. Great. That's yeah, yeah. I can't die to do it. So are there, are there, yes, are there any, uh, are there any particular acts, ra rather than vote each individual department, are there any particular aspects of the town budget members of the board would like to discuss? I'd, I'd like to mention a couple of things. Sure. Uh, scale, scale's no. on vacation. That was out. Uh, that was convenient. But I, I, I thought it was. <laughs> She's watching on uh, <laughs> cable television. So <laughs> but that's good. Excuse. India. <laughs> Other side of the world. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought it was the She's probably way too. some outstanding contracts to be negotiated, so <coughs> you, you have a placeholder in the budget for possible settlements. Uh, I did read in the paper that you settled for some, not for highway communications and police, but for some, and the number they gave the salary increase <coughs> over three years was 6.5% is what they stated, is that correct? But it does not include the step in. So I'd really like to know what the all-in is for that three years. Uh, the step increase amount is zero. That unit does not have step. None of those employees. Correct. None of those employees have stepped. But in addition to the six and a half, there were about 13 or 14 of them. We did a, a market study. Mm -hmm. About half of them were deemed to be fine. Half of them were deemed to be trailing. Uh, some by a lot. And uh, we, we arranged to do bring them to market over two years, and that was the equivalent of about a percent on top of the six and a half. But that, right, but that's, I think that, that's for a different reason. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, because I, I was just looking at what would be the impact on the all-in salaries, because then that has, that also impacts the uh, pension plan. That's all, Steve. Thanks. Can I ask a question? So um, I just had a question on Sergeant Perillo. He is, as I understand it, on leave. Right. And is that an extended leave? And is he paid? And he's on military. They get paid a lot of sick leave when they leave 
does that mean we should anticipate greater overtime with Mike's potential <coughs> resignation and well, you're, you're probably, probably the impact of what it's, you know, realistically is down one sergeant to delay to get back up to the full strength you would expect that overtime could, could increase a little bit. We would not allow to hire someone unless he actually tenders a resignation. Isn't that if he's been deployed, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I don't know that you know I don't know that much about his situation because that's not a department I manage, so I'm not I mean, I know he's off on guard duty. I don't know. I mean, he's in the country. He's not. De well, de I mean, deployed. In other words, he's been called up. Yes, or he. Well, he's away. I don't know if he was called up or if he went. But well, that, it actually makes here. a difference, um, and that would, that would actually be something that we do need to talk about because they're, you know, they're, if someone is deployed not voluntarily, we need to leave their position open. Mm -hmm. And that's very different than somebody who you expect to be tendering oh, resignation. Oh, well, his position is open. Like I said, I don't believe he submitted a resignation. But, okay, so we really need to clarify that. That, that really does impact the budget. It does. Well, it might, but you're not, without a resignation, you're not in a position to do anything that's going to take any action to respond to that. Okay. Others? Sorry, where is Gail? On vacation. India. India. In the recreation department, um, in the uh, financial statement, the audit financial statements, we make roughly four hundred thousand dollars of charges for services, and I just didn't see that in the budget. And I was just wondering, is it should we have seen it in the revenue line item? Should they have added up to approximately four hundred thousand? Are they are they similar? You're talking about the enterprise fund, right? Yeah. Now we go, and it's always it's separate from the general fund, so it's never. In our budget books. All right. Okay. So you don't appropriate funds for that. Yep. What you do appropriate is if you look at that tab 29, and you see on the front page of this the recreation enterprise fund. Yes. You are taking thirty thousand dollars from that fund, subsidizing the park and rec budget, so that thirty thousand less tax dollars would be raised for that purpose. But that's the extent of your. Uh, okay. And I see we did that the prior year. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So are we now making a conscious effort to take go into that fund thirty thousand dollars a year and drop it to zero? Is that You've made a it? conscious effort as a board to draw down fund balances that you thought uh, could Correct. sustain that. Could what? Could sustain that kind of withdrawal. So you, you have that three or four places in the budget. There's mm -hmm. that one. Yep. The police mm -hmm. department has a drawdown if you look at their budget from the vehicle fund. The uh, communications. Department has a significant drawdown. It's over $100,000 from the cell tower account for that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at youth services, uh, there's a significant offset for that. Solid waste has a significant offset. There are there are many places in the budget that's not. That's not well, I, I guess if I said okay, we, we have drawdowns, but if we continue at this rate, the draw, we have no more well to, to, to look water out of it and. And if I just use thirty thousand dollars, and it looks like the budget, the number will be, we got another four years of this, and then well, that's it. So, uh, in the audit, I mean, you have a healthy balance in that. In that, account. And that assumes steady state for revenue and expense as it is right now, yeah. which could change also. It's one hundred thirty-six thousand. One hundred thirty-six thousand at the start of this year. So, so we got basically four more years. Look the year before the start of the end there, and that'll give you a sense of one fifty-seven. So, you know, whole, and that was after making the thirty out. So it's yes. At a meeting last year, we had a conversation about this, and there was a, an opinion of the board that the varying funds that we had spread throughout the budget were getting fairly robust, mm -hmm. and that just salting money away wasn't a really good use of taxpayers' money, that we should start to draw some of that down. And so future boards will have a decision to make again, do you want to continue to draw it down, or do we leave it be, or change it around? And that I think it would be subject to not only the town's point of view at the time, Michael, but as well as what's the revenue expense I'm looking like for those particular line items. Right. I mean, when I think of drawdown, if we created the fund do we want, and we keep at this pace, the fund will be a zero in four years. Is that the All general? else being equal, yes. Well, yes. Huh. Yes. All else being equal. You know, last fiscal year, the fund did make before any transfers out almost $8,800. So right. typically it does have a positive operation. So mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. So it's, but, so but it's right. I, 
you said mm -hmm. you said something that the we're, gonna, we're drawing down a hundred thousand dollars on the um, uh, on, on the lease on the cell, cell power. power cell power yep yeah. sorry so so can we kind of focus on that because that's and, and yeah. is that a one time drawdown or is that a uh, no you've been doing that for several years I mean you know that has ongoing issues um, well. I think of drawdown, I'm talking about that net of the income. So can you just point to the, uh, where, where do I see uh, that? I'm sorry, it's tab 15. Tab 15, and it'll be the last line on that first page. Oh yeah, okay. So, but that's that's just, that's offset. Of, we, we make a lot of money on that. We, we should, we should yeah, we're, rent, rent, we're renting, we're bringing a lot of rent, rental. A lot of rent money. Okay, yeah. so that number's been stable. So when I look at the balance there in the communications um, fund, do you know what it is, Rick, off the top of your head or something? Um, yeah, yeah, it's over 300. Three, 360? 350, 360? Maybe? Um, I'm sorry, I think less than two. Okay. What page are you on? I'm, I'm in the fund yeah, notes tab. What's the change in the fund balance for it? Uh, I mean, okay. that, that's really, that's the key number of uh, Let's see. Let me go get Here you go. balance is it's over 379. Okay. okay. So that has seven, eight, I mean, this rate, that rate, seven, eight years. Right. Right. Versus, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I guess at the beginning this point, of the year, that has three, 317 at an end of the year at 280. So uh, okay. we draw down 38. It had uh, revenues of 160. Right. You know, obviously we have so that seems like the right base. Towers that we run through mm -hmm. there, and then we take this money in addition to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I just to make sure everyone understands how we vote. Uh, at least the town's <coughs> budget. We do it in three parts. We vote the town's budget. We vote the debt service, and we vote the capital budget. Um, so um, I'm just moving on. If there are questions about. Uh, other questions about the town budget before we then move on to both uh, the debt service as well as um, anticipated capital expenditures. Uh, not about the specific issues. I was hoping there would be at least a representative of the selectmen. Um, to, my comments really are about the budget in general, not about any line item. Um, and I was really hoping to address Gail or at least you know, Dennis or, or David um, because I really think it's, it's clear that in a traditional way of thinking, this, this budget is very tight. It's, you know, there is not a superfluous item in the operating budget, and I do intend to uh, approve every line item, but um, I think that these incremental cost increases are, you know, I'm sorry, Jerry, to have to agree with you after all these years. <laughs> but, um, For those of you watching at home, I, I hope you heard that. I know, I know. Wait, get a picture, get a picture. Jerry? I'm speechless, which is very yeah. unusual for me. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> you agree with him? I agree. He has said for years that these incremental changes are unsustainable over time, and it is becoming increasingly clear that if they're only offset by increases in tax revenue and our grant list doesn't grow, that is absolutely correct. And we need to fundamentally change 
the way we're thinking about not only our costs, but our revenues. And I was hoping to urge the selectmen, actually, to, to think about things um, holistically. And we, we said this at the Global Facilities Committee last week, that we need to explore every possibility, not only for cost savings, but for re revenue generation. And you know, primarily, um, I was going to talk about um, uh, our, our property, the property that's owned in Weston. Um, so, wait a minute, just a sec. I kind of made notes, but it was a little bit different than, okay. Anyway, I would really like the town to explore the use of all the properties, not just, you know, the police department or the schools, which is what we're currently doing, but everything. I mean, we have very large pieces of property, both the north and the east, uh, sorry, in Georgetown and the east end of town that are sitting there, and the question is, are they potential revenue generators? Should they be sold? Should they be developed for housing, for low-income housing for seniors, or for affordable housing for seniors? Um, what should be done with them? Those so don't seem to be on the table right now when we are talking about a lot of land use issues. Um, Jarvis property, um, it's historical. We can't change Jarvis House, but can it be renovated and, and something built on that property so that it is historically uh, in keeping with the town, but viable for either sale or rental property. And, and I mentioned this again, the bus garage. It is, you know, a, this monstrosity <coughs> across from the, our beautiful town center. And is there anything we can do with a long-term lease so that can be used to maintain the bucolic property of the town? but to put something there that isn't an eyesore that might actually generate revenue. Because if we can't contain costs, <coughs> if the way we are talking about costs is basically that's what we have to do, we need to think about the revenue side. And so I was really hoping to, um, to talk to Gail, but, um, she, but she's not. But, but, but this is, she, she'll be back. She'll be back, she'll, <laughs> but, hear, but, she'll and, hear this. And, and, and this, this discussion, we know, because the town is fired, is, is consulting, considering, doing, doing, considering. is looking, but they also had, uh, the one thing they've already done is, is this initial study mm -hmm. of why people may not be moving to Weston. Mm -hmm. the, the, but the, to echo what Melissa said, we are, in a way, as a board, when dealing with things like, you know, I don't know if the education budget, but the same principle, you know, step increases, public sector, employees in salary. We, we can't, as a board, in the absence of a revenue uh, uh, enhancer, do very much about this. Um, and so to the extent that the, the answer keeps being raising taxes, you know, I support Melissa's statement that the town has to broaden its way of thinking. And um, my, my personal view, which is, is commercial development at a some, some level um, would be one answer. There'll be many answers needed, but that's one answer. And I understand there's a million reasons which I've heard that it can't be done, but I think that there are potential ways if, if people recognize that this is unsustainable, that there has to be a uh, consideration given to some reasonable uh, development, whether <coughs> it'll be in housing-oriented, some type of commercial establishment, something that will enhance life in town. These are the kinds of things that will, maybe it'll only bring over time a half a percent, a one percent change in our revenue picture, one and a half percent, but over time it helps and it makes a difference. So th th that is just, you know, in talking about everything tonight, I think it's just a general view, at least I have, that we need to, as a political matter, ask the town, ask the selectmen to start thinking broadly about ways they can balance the revenue side, since nobody has come up with a way yet to do anything about the salary increases at the public sector level. Nobody's come up with any way yet to increase the grand list revenue, so that's the only other side of things that we are aware of at this point. <clears throat> Who else? We'll continue that conversation another time. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we're voting on a town operating budget 
of twelve million four hundred eight thousand seven hundred fifty two dollars. Is that right? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So let's move on to debt service and then we'll move on to the capital budget. So the debt service <coughs> number is six three ninety nine six two three. Say blank, but that's because 6390 yeah. 963. Right. Any motion for that? Yeah. So, so moved. Moved. discussion, isn't it? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that passes. Uh, the next is the uh, town and school capital budget. Right. And that number, I'm sorry, is um, $1,035,458. Their discussion? I would just like to say one thing, uh, a couple of things. One, I would hope that when the oil tank job is done, I guess this summer, that we, we like, I'd like to hear just a report on where that fund is, what will be remaining, and what we have left to move forward. And at, some, at some point, then in, in the fall, I guess. Could you give, um, as long as as long as you're answering questions, Amy? Could you give a, a little sense of so you'll have some remaining monies left over, whatever that number is? Give just give a directionally. Where do you think you might be looking to spend that in the future? Where is that going to go? Well, the children's room was the room, the space that was most recently renovated, and that's why we had put it on hold for now. Um, so the children's room um, in the near future, we hope. Um, we also know that technology is needed. Um, the, we're going to create some more small study spaces, we hope, and we're going to at least wire it now. We're not going to do all the technology now. We're going to need more technology in the children's room, and as you all know, that has sort of built an obsolescence. So we need to preserve funds to deal with the evolution of technology over time as both a virtual and a physical library. And because this is a grant that, or a request that we certainly can't expect to see, 
see again in the foreseeable future, mm -hmm. we know we need to keep our powder dry to see what happens as libraries evolve over the next five or seven years. As a municipal library, unlike the other recipients who are 501c3s, we cannot invest this money for long-term growth and get to keep it short like the capital fund does. Mm -hmm. okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Thanks. Thank you for asking. On the um, oil, the uh, oil tank sinking fund. Um, how much money of that two hundred and sixty is going to be spent in the next twelve months to build it? I think their estimate was ninety thousand a tank, looking at two tanks. With the contingency, with the contingency, with, with either yeah. yeah, either we find something underneath the tank or it rolls forward yeah, to sure. the next tank. So yeah, I think that's right. In the backup, they did have an estimate. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So it's that they have all the they have the work pages from the corpus. And did I read that those tanks still have a few more years of life in them? One sixty for the two tanks and a ninety-nine contingency. Right. Two sixty all in. Yeah. Right. I guess. I guess my my general big picture question is why now in this budget if if we can get it in these couple of years and if it was at the is it, are we even ordered to do this now? Is it Within a certain period of time, and the nine tanks are queuing up that they're coming to the last few years, so we're trying to space them out. We have deferred them a couple of years. Got it. so many letters in support of the Board of Ed budget, in support of the Senior Center against any budget. It is truly remarkable, and clearly this is an excellent project. I love that we're bringing the library up to the 21st century. There is no doubt. I am speaking as just a citizen, whether I use the library every day or not at all. This is clearly a great move. Um, I'm now speaking from a financial perspective, and it's very hard for me to understand the idea that you have a million four, um, and I understand that 300,000 has been designated just in case there are claims against it, but it is considered probably unlikely to be used. Um, but that there is a, there is, a, and the word inappropriate was used last year when we asked about hiring an additional librarian. It's an inappropriate use of the money. And I can see where that's, the operating budget, but this is a capital item. And the town is at being asked to pay for it, and the town has basically gutted almost everything in their capital budget to put this 360,000 into it. And at this time, I think the library has embarked on something that's, that's terrific, but they're asking the town to put in, and the town is going through the potential of a, a $10 million bonding. There are other, facilities in town that are in much dire need of improvement and somehow the library has the 360,000 has come to the very top of the list when it's right there in the libraries you know it's in their coffers and it can't even be invested in long-term um, uh, instruments so I'm and, and this is it, it's going to Please do not, again, I am very supportive of the project, but I don't think that the town should be held responsible when the money is there and that there are other items that the town might um, have to use that money for. And if there are future items down the line, five years down the line, please do come to us because that, if you have to spend that money, that would be a legitimate capital expenditure. But um, I, I just don't see it now. And then the idea we were we asked what would happen if we turned down the three hundred and sixty thousand, and the answer was we'll can the whole project. We will cut off our noses to spite our faces. Not the whole project, just the town portion. Just so we wouldn't do the windows or the asbestos remediation. 
Okay, I, so I, I'm incorrect that. that if we turn that's down correct. the 360, you will go ahead with the 800. Absolutely, the 6 to 8, absolutely, plus the whatever the choice is. Absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry, I was, under, I was under the impression that you would just absolutely cut the whole project. Absolutely, no. I'm sorry for that. Okay, okay, and all right, so I, I was wrong there, okay. But a different question. So you have the money, it's a million four, you have some, not sure what you're going to do with the rest, but here in this budget year, 2015-16, you have an amount of money that you could spend, and I think you said previously that doing the outdoor and the indoor at the same time is the only thing that makes sense because you'll be pulling apart things and this is where it should go. I, I'm, I'm still struggling with the logic of the position that y you don't have a restriction in your grant, in your gift, excuse me. But yet, you think it's more appropriate that the town pay for this than it come out of the gift. And even though we've had times in the past, like last year, you said you wanted good personnel. So you came and we, we granted that. It's almost like you, 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 you're, you're essentially saying, I don't know if the town's going to be there for us in the future when you, we ask for other things. So let me hold back money just in case. I, I don't see the logic of it, and I know that in the past when you know we've all gone through this, we've had the fire department issue. They paid for their truck. It's it's it just doesn't make sense to me the position. In all honesty, I I, I understand you said editorially. This is a meeting among yourselves. No, we are asking. Do you speak first, or I mean, have a discussion, or well, I, I, I was directed to you. Excuse me. It was directed to okay. you. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm. I'm sure, no, you're not that appropriate. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the the asbestos on the windows have contamination. It's a 1963 building. It needs to be removed. Philosophically, the board has historically, I think they raised close to 200,000 for the edition in '94. They participated in an '83 edition. They automated the, the um, circulation system. They probably bought a new piece of furniture and curtain and draped and carpet in there. So there's a history of our trying not to come to the board and the town to do things that we view as being outside the operating, typical ongoing operating pattern. So as you've replaced our boiler and as you've replaced our roof, we view the floor <coughs> somebody would consider the library as a beneficiary of such a grant, they're not going to give us money to replace the capital budget. And the board feels very strongly that we can only continue our tradition of making incremental investments, not knowing what's going to proceed going forward. And, and as we look at the renovations, I mean, we got the prices for flooring the other day. We may have to go above it, even with adding incremental so we want to do it the right way, but we want to make sure that the once in a generation grant, that we're able to continue our tradition going forward. And, and the board believes firmly that the envelope, as I've heard you, you all refer to it, is the town's responsibility, not the beneficiary, uh, not us as the, but the board as the beneficiary of, of a request. Would the envelope need to be done if you weren't undergoing this renovation? Um, Two or three years ago, Karen talked to Tom about it um, when there was a possible grant before we were in a renovation mode and the decision was made not to spend the money to look into it. But now that we had a full grant application going in, we work closely with Tom and because the windows are the 63 windows and because we now know there's asbestos PCBs and vinyl asbestos tile and we're getting 50% of that money covered, which may not come back in the future, the decision has made, been made by the town to proceed with that. Um, that was a town decision, not a board decision. Now, does the board operate within the confines of the town when you decide to make the $800,000 investment? That doesn't have to be voted on by the town or by the Board of Finance or anybody like that, does it? We have an understanding of the town that anything we do that relates to the, to the physical sets of the building, that it's our expectation that we will be running it by the Board of Selectmen and have the building committee 
So it's under the state statute, it's our money, but I don't think any of us on the board would put a roller coaster in the middle of the library without clearing it with somebody first. Yeah. Yeah. Good plan. Yeah. Water slide. look at this is, is no, great. Um, you know, one of your first comments uh, was the, we, the town has to get more creative about bringing income in and I think one of the things that um, we should be encouraging as a board is more income and there's no better one than having wealthy citizens who probably went to the library every you know, week or whatever make those type of donations and so I'd hate to think that our decision here would impact anyone's desire or attractiveness to making these type of donations when they literally, there's probably a lot of seven figure donations that people are thinking about and maybe watching us. You, you mean that you think that somehow by asking them to put the money into the outer shell versus all inside, that that might dissuade? If, if someone made a donation and said, my donation is gonna go to the outer shell. But that's not what happened here. Well, the you the, have, the, the, the right. donation did not specif specify where it went. It, 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 right, but it made it to the, to the library. Yes. And I'm just guessing, okay, that, that 
intent was for the inside of the library. I mean, it's that probably a good educated Did you guess. have a daughter? No, I didn't know them at all. But I'm just, I'm, I'm, I would think that if someone made a donation to a library, they weren't talking about the outer shell, they were thinking about the inner shell. That's just my opinion, okay? And so, um, and, and, and so the fact that um, what I like about this is for every dollar we're putting in, the library is putting $2 in. Um, I did have a conversation with Amy and encouraged her to not sit on money but invest it so the library project isn't incremental, but it's a, people walk in and go, wow, you know? And, it, and, and so um, I'm glad that the number, if, if anything, is creeping up. But I think this is a, an area that we should explore as a board and say, gee, how many other donors are there and what else can we do to encourage them? And, and I'm making the distinction between outer shell and inner shell, and maybe that's the, the disagreement we're having, but I think it's one of the things that is attractive about this project is uh, for every dollar that we're donating, we're getting you know, two back. And so. Yeah, I'd also say, I think that the board already feels that we're in a compromised position because we're, if you add up lighting, electrical, the water fountain, the ADA ramp, you know, we'll even buying the staff furniture because Tom said you can wait a year or we can't fund it this year. We probably have over 350,000 plus and the flooring could be extremely expensive that we're, that's not on your plate, that we're not gonna postpone doing. So I think the board already feels that we are sharing um, some of what would otherwise be capital expenses that relate to the infrastructure of the building. Now let's see if this argument works. One of my expectations for this is I'm, I'm very comfortable with the amount they're contributing because the, the amount is not a known sum yet. It's, it's still a little loose about there. So there, I'm comfortable with that we need some contingency. But I'm, I'm, I'm additionally, additionally comforted by the fact that if, the, if next year there's a library need that is outside the operating, and, and by the way, that's as much art as science in determining where is the line between operating and extra. Mm -hmm. But if there's a, a need that's gonna be expected, the library says we want this new program, whatever this marvelous new thing is. The first question I'm gonna say to the board and to Karen and everybody else is, so you've got this pile of money. This sounds like a really good place to make an investment in this new program, which is, in your, in your judgment, beneficial to the townspeople. Not asking us for that money. That sort of future programming or capability, um, I'd like them to have that flexibility to do that and therefore not come back to the taxpayers for those sorts of programs. But last year they did come back to us to say we really feel that we needed another librarian and there was there was really good cause for that mm -hmm. but we were told it is not appropriate for us to use that grant money so you can't pay staff, can't pay staff for no and, and we accepted it and we voted to exactly get exactly so the new new programming it's it's very the, the line is very thin it and, is. and to address right. David mm -hmm. you know two years ago we had 50 people who asked not to touch the Board of Ed budget, and there was still a, a cut to the Board of Ed budget. So, you know, you've, you've listened to the people who are asking to support the library, and you're using that as a persuasive argument, but then again, two years ago, that didn't hold. Right. And, and my, my own view, Jerry, is that I think there's merit in <coughs> Just so everyone understands, at the time uh, this gift was given to the library, there was an equivalent gift given to the fire department. And EMS. And EMS, I'm sorry, you're, thanks for, for correcting me. And, and we went back to the fire department and said, we would like you, because we would like you to fund the, the, the purchase of your next fire engine, which cost about $600,000. Well, they haven't spent a penny of it. No, yeah, but, yeah, but, right, but we, would, we would be putting money into the budget every year to the capital budget right. to fund the uh, cost of a, of a new fire engine. Um, and, 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 they, and they did that. Um, and we did not go to them and say, and oh, by the way, we expect the balance of 
your gift to be spent on town requirements, fire department requirements. So we are mm -hmm. handling in this proposal the gift that the library received in a similar fashion to the way we are handling the mm -hmm. gift to the fire department. Yeah. And mm -hmm. since the request, the fire department has not asked us for a cent in capital expenditures, is that correct? Uh, no. If I might, uh, you mentioned the fire department a couple of times. Uh, there are a couple of ways that's probably not a bad analogy. You may remember, it's shocking to me how quickly it gets away from me. Three or four years ago, we built a new fire station. The town paid $900,000 of that. The town does not own it. They are not a town department. They are an entirely separate entity. They provide a valuable town service. Mm -hmm. the, the powers that be said we should participate in this. That was a little less than half the cost of that property. Here with the library, you know, the things you're talking about, we're leveraging uh, the capital budget money with grant money. That's, that's why it's in there this year. It was a bit of a challenge to um, get to that number. And in order to do it in, in what we thought was a fiscally responsible way, there was about a quarter million in other capital stuff we didn't fund. We, we, we sort of took it out, we reduced those items so we could do this plus 360, you know, from zero to 360 on the library. If you go through and you look at, you know, it's not glamorous stuff, but if you look at the vehicle sinking fund and the bridge fund and the turf fund and, and the, the paving account we had in the last year, and I'm missing some other fund, there's over a quarter of a million dollars. Those things were intentionally brought down, so uh, the library uh, roof uh, account. But those things were intent intentionally brought down so we could get this in. And, and we got this in because we had a time, you know, sort of a ticking time opportunity to leverage the grant money. So it's a little difficult to say, I, someone asked this last week at, at the hearing, you know, they said, well, how, how much of the grant money, you know, how, how much grant money are you getting for the 360? The answer is it kind of depends. It is, it is dollar for dollar, but it's at, at the time, about 250 of it was windows, and that was going to be no grant money. And then, you know, the next 110 was going to be dollar for dollar grant money on top of that. And the hunt time was really 140. So you think it was be 140 in grant money, but we thought the estimates were high, so we brought the number down in the budget from 390 to 360. So again, look at the fire department. We contributed almost half of the expenses of that. Here, it's an actual town-owned building with actual town employees in it, we're, we're paying way less than half in that. Do you think if the, if the fire department had had the grant at the time that we would have approved that money? Um, they had a lot of money at the time hmm. that we approved that money. They, did. they, they didn't take their account anywhere near zero. Uh, yeah, nowhere near. So. They had well over a million dollars at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so building to building, I'm just saying that you did contribute at, at a, you know, you Different time, different cycle, you know, who knows? But you contributed at a much higher rate of, of total cost in that building than you're being asked to contribute in, in this building. Mm -hmm. We tried to do some other things in the budget so that we could fit this in there. And um, the, the other component that, that Steve talked about, fire department and EMS, got, they got the same million four that this department did. Last year when uh, you and, and Gail kind of worked out this agreement for the capital budget for them. It was 600,000 was deemed to be an appropriate number. And so you, you know, they're now talking, they, the library trustees are now talking about right, six to 800 and, and, and up from there. So as a template, if you follow the template, this would, you know, it would fit in nicely. You adjust any way you want your prerogative. Um, if we didn't do, if we only funded 180 and, and probably can't do the window project because, so that was estimated at 250, I think. Right? No, the idea of the, no, the, idea the library. They would, they would take the 180. Right, if they would probably, match yeah, that 180. They don't, may not want to, but that's, the, no mm -hmm. one, again, no one is against the project. Mm -hmm. No one is against the full project, including in and out. It's the question of in a year where we can't cut things from areas where we, you know, no, they have, they have a, an amount of money they could use. <coughs> they don't think they should. They are choosing not to use it, but they could use it. That choice is unavailable in any other area of the budget at this point. And 
And so what we're saying here, oh, I'm sorry, that's me, me, I am saying, is, is that if, if there's a choice to be had, and I see Amy's point as well, the board's point, that the reason I'm suggesting 50% is because I think there's merit on her side of the argument that maybe philosophically it's, it, it's questionable whether she should use this or not for this type of renovation. But there's also merit on the town side taxpayer side of the equation, and that, that, that th th there's money that doesn't have to be spent, and in the future, if there's great projects that are brought to the table, and I'm sure that this amount of money that they are gonna spend is gonna take care of their projects for some time to come, but in the future, if there is, then the town may be receptive at that point. But I don't really see why we can't compromise on this to come to the middle, but I would want, if we do support a 180, Should we have another motion? I would motion? make yeah. I would make that motion to reduce the uh, the capital expenditure from three sixty to one hundred and eighty thousand. I would second it. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. 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 Motion fails. Any other conversations on the capital budget? So we're voting a capital budget of one million three hundred fifty-four thousand five hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Right. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, I'm just a, well, I, oh, sorry, I was gonna abstain. Okay. I, I'll, I'll oppose, okay. opposed. Oppose. So it's five to, five to two. Thank you. Um, I have nothing further on that, just um, the question you had earlier and I didn't have a complete answer for you, Chief Marshall. Uh, it gives me a letter from Sergeant Carrillo, says he is uh, recalled to active military service, so that answers your question and he is uh, scheduled to return June 27th. Oh. There we go. Well, that's a big difference. We can expand on it a little bit. Um, he's due to return on June 27th, but he is still going to be not working here. He's going to be utilizing <coughs> vacation time and accumulated time to maintain his insurance. <coughs> and his orders are for a year from March 16th this year. So mm. currently his orders are for a good for a year unless he gets extended and he's not due to come back to duty here until March 16th of 2016. So my question is, in the interim, should we expect overtime to increase uh, with his, his absence? His ships specifically, because he's a sergeant, he's always a third man on the ship, they don't specifically need to be filled up necessarily unless somebody else takes that same day off that he's out. So it doesn't actually cause overtime by him being out because his ships don't have to specifically be filled because he's in a, a uh, supervisory role. So, um, but the thing is, is that um, he does have a reserve left over in his salary line of uh, between sixteen and eighteen thousand dollars that would cover some of the overtime that might be uh, incurred because of him being away. If somebody taking the same shift out. The point of order, um, the vote Alan and, and Melissa is against, they're, they were voting against the whole capital budget. And normally we kind of do the line item, I'm guessing you're just voting against the library. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. That would be we did that first, but then we, we, we that did That was the intention. Right, right. That, I think that was the intention. Exactly. Right. Well, we can just note that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Thank yeah. you for Yeah. Okay. And, and no, no issue with the balance of the right. Yeah, right. So, no, did you, did you, well, right. Okay, so that's the town. Um, next is the Board of Education. So um, the budget as presented now is less. Less. 40,600,000. 7,82. 2.62% uh, increase. Right. You, you, you received Thank that today, right? Yes, yes, yes we, we did. Got, Thank you. We got the email. Thank, Thank you. you. But it doesn't have the new total, so I can do that. Yes, well, they just gave it to us. 48603782. So it's a reduction from our original uh, 3.17 budget that the board of ed passed uh, before it moved on to the selectmen to where we are now. Um, it uh, decreased by $263,290 since uh, late January. And today's reduction was roughly $85,000 yeah. ballpark, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Are there questions or comments? I've got some comments. Um, my comments really, I just want to provide some context to my comments. One, I looked at this budget, I looked at it in context of um, the last five years, 2010 up until this budget. Uh, we were down approximately 210 students. Uh, the best projection we have, which is the NESDEC projections, had the next five years down 289. And I think the one thing of looking at projections we know is it's going to be wrong. We just don't know what, what direction it's going to be wrong, but it's probably going to be wrong. But at the end of the day, that's the budget. That's the, the context that I looked at this budget. Um, I get a lot of requests, uh, not requests, but comments. Gee, if you only just do blank, uh, it would be so easy. You know, wh why is this such a so difficult for you? And I think they're just frankly, um, this is a very, very difficult, um, there, there, there are no easy answers. There, there's a lot of small incremental changes that we make and, and ultimately they, may, they add up. Um, but I don't think there's any um, easy decisions. One of the things I think we've all observed it and, and commented on is how tight a budget this is. Um, a lot of thought went into it. Any of us who watch the Board of Ed um, uh, deliberate, you know, they, they do it with a lot of thought, a lot of um, uh, knowledge I have a lot of respect for every, every one of those board members who work as hard as they do to get these type of numbers. Um, what I'm looking at is um, this tight budget with the givens as the givens. And what I'm looking at is those givens are the rules that we all just assume. And they're just built-in assumptions into the budget. And what I want trying to do in, in my um, ultimate decision here is help uh, help the Board of Ed prioritize their, their um, uh, proposal and basically start bending a lot of the rules that we just take in our givens. Um, somebody here who's uh, kind of an active Board of Finance watcher said, gee, you guys, you know, you, you had that meeting and you didn't, you didn't mention one difficult decision you'd make. You, go, you said you were, um, you know, everything's dire, and, 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 but you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't give us any specifics. And so what I'd like to do is kind of read um, what I would look at and say, you know what, these are things that we just assume are givens in, our, in, a, in the budget, and because they're given, this is so difficult. But I'd like to just kind of start with just reading a, a couple of these, um, starting with our third rail, which is class size. Um, um, you know, but I'll, I'll just start there. The copy center is $211,000 per year. Um, most businesses that I know don't use copies like they do in the past when the fourth year or four year contract, I think that's a wonderful opportunity. Courses being offered, um, almost any course that I've seen offered in the last five years, I go, wow, those are great courses, whether it's Chinese, whether it's robotics. At the same time, what I think we need to do, and I, you know, I, I know what we need to do, is when we offer a course, we have to take one away. And, it's, and, and unfortunately, that's the position we're in, um, given the, um, the, tech, the um, economics of this town right now. Technology being purchased, we just want to make sure that it's meeting, um, it, it's not only meeting educational specs, but it's meeting some of our financial um, goals as well. Are we getting the ROI on that? Um, role of online education, you've heard us as a board, and especially probably David and I, you know, talk about that. Um, I see it every day, almost every month, more and more uh, online um, um, education being implemented at, at, at schools, colleges, and, and et cetera. The union contract, um, we can go on about this for a long time. It is what it is, I understand that, but at the same time, when we go into these um, union contracts and we have a real specific objective, like converting teachers to all HSAs, 10 years ago that would have been unheard of. It happened, you know? The Board of Ed made it happen. I think we have to prioritize what we're, what we're looking for there. Um, it's so frustrating when I, when I hear you know, how hard it is to terminate a teacher that isn't pre pre performing. And, um, you know, are there grants um, that we should be more aggressive looking for? Um, is the OPEB levels the right levels? Substitute teachers, the, um, the, um, the Board of Ed has done a terrific job in the last two years getting that number down. Probably three years ago, we didn't think we could get it down as, as, as low as we have. They, they accomplished it. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that the Board won't hear anymore is um, um, you know, preventive care programs anymore. Um, I've seen them work in the private sector. There's no reason why it can't work in the public sector, but it's not an off-the-shelf uh, program. It doesn't cost anything. And the one thing I think this board has shown is the ability and the desire to make investments. And that's, to me, an investment. And if it costs a little more money in the two, fiscal year 2016, but has you know, um, returns in 2017 and 18, I, I would be all for that. Um, 
and job roles and department chairs, what their roles are, what they, what they do, what they don't do, is, is, it, is it right? Um, the Board of Ed came up with a, a program called ESS. Um, it's no longer in the budget, um, but I look at that as an investment. And I think it has an investment and it has a long-term payoff. And then lastly, the cost of security. Um, we all recognize the cost of security. I think that's the reason why um, a number of employees have gone up in the last three years. I'm looking to fill for that, is I think that's the reason why. We've increased uh, some, some employees in response to uh, but, <coughs> but you know what, three, okay, uh, you yeah. know, What's the right number? What what makes it right? What, what and, and and I think everyone looks at it and say, well, you, you don't know if it's wrong until the until the worst happens. But I, I just would, would question that as well. Just had to just keep examining those. So those are just an example. I didn't want to let that person uh, make a total wimp of of, of me. And um, but I, I think it's, it, it's it's one of the things that I think is um, uh, important. Overall. Um, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do <clears throat> in my proposal is to slow the progress to $25,000 a student. And uh, this is year, the first year that we went out to exceed 20,000. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the economics are working <clears throat> with built-in increases of 25 to 3% and reductions of 289 that they'll just get there pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> what I'm... Um, <clears throat> Proposing is a reduction of three, and, and by the way, the number of the reduction is three hundred thirty-seven thousand um, dollars. That was before the eighty-five thousand dollars came in. Um, I didn't know about that until I came up with that, and I just want to explain how I got there. Um, what I did is um, looked at the increases of in the budget. The increases totaled one million three eighty-two. Uh, salaries and benefits were in there. I just accepted that as a, as a given for now. Energy was there, and this is just a question, but I think I know the answer. That energy increase is there because that we, that's a, 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 um, not usage, but it's a price increase, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, I, I looked at that as a given. There was um, maintenance software and contracts of another $191,000. And so we, I just said, you know, if the new paradigm that I'd like to talk about is Wherever we make an investment, okay, that's what, what we were doing is we're prioritizing. And so what I'd like to think of is these were $191,000 of priorities. And so if that's a priority, where's $191,000 that comes off the other end? You know, wh what is the priority? I can't say technology is, is a priority or not for sitting here at the Board of Finance. But I think in terms of a guideline, given the economics of the next five years, um, I think that would be... <clears throat> A, a, a new paradigm to look at. So I looked at that 191,000, um, looked at the 85, added the 85,000 that came in, I want to say around four o'clock today, and then basically said there's another $60,000, and I used that as an FTE to make things, to, to encourage the, um, the board to make it more efficient. So the 191 plus the 85 plus the 60 is the 337. And at the end of the day, <coughs> what, I, what I'm encouraging is us as a board to lead um, not just count beans. And, um, and so one of the things that this is doing is forcing all of us to make priorities, and that's what this is about, this budget. So, thank you. So, so, so I'm clear, so knowing that Phil has, we've given the, the extra 70 or 85, so your ask, your ask is 250, approximately? Approximately, yeah. yeah. Roughly. yeah I, I, I just haven't worked the numbers, but, but it's... Because um, we already know we've got the 85 built in. Off of today. Yeah, and that, that uh, yes. Okay. So 85 minus, yep. Roughly 250. Yeah, 250. If you want to make a motion, we can have a discussion. I would make them, well, I don't, someone may have a higher number, so I don't oh, know. Oh, that's you know, true. So. That's true. Uh, just, just in general on the, <coughs> on the budget, uh, first specifically on the insurance rebid, I want to thank Joanne yet again. Not only for putting together a very clear, detailed budget, but also for going through that process. And the only thing I have to say about it, though, is remember in past years, we went through all that work, and actually there was a pretty big bounce decrease. And this, this one didn't quite match any of that, but I guess at least you didn't change your character. So, I mean, that, that's good. That saves us a certain amount of The carriers money. are getting smarter. <laughs> it's uh, taken them five years, but they're finally catching on. Uh, <laughs> darn it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, 
but still, it, 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 it's a help. It's a help, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's appreciated. It's just too, too bad after, after all that. Um, the other thing is, in general, I, I don't disagree that unsustainable is, is al almost the word I, I get to, but exactly where it would come from or how much at any one time. I made, I made a specific suggestion in an earlier meeting and it was never commented on, it just it was passed by. Uh, I'm not gonna go back to that. I'm not gonna try to be specific about anything, but just challenge the administration, particularly Colleen, who's a very creative person, to start doing some of that kind of creative planning because it, it's like philosophers uh, sometimes say, you, you've got to look at the world differently, and it's called the Copernican question, because then you can look at, once you look at the world differently, you've asked a question that may horrify some people, but it turns out to be the right answer anyway. So I'm gonna ask and challenge you to just think about it, particularly with declining enrollment, and what can be done more structurally uh, within the dynamics of how the school is operated and not go into any, any, any more detail. Um, other than that, um, I'm, I'm going to support the budget as currently proposed and I could make a motion in that regard if you'd like. Can, can we have comments? Of course. Make motions. Uh, what do we use? What's the uh, well, Michael, you. Winnable. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, maybe someone who has higher. I know. Does anyone? I, 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 I think my number would be higher than yours. Right. So okay. we would either put <laughs> Michael's up for discussion, or we could just. Yeah. What's the Robert's rules? Well, I don't. Margaret. Well, I just thought maybe if the. <laughs> no, I, 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 I think maybe Robert's got a point that I, people, I like, I, I people think, would yeah. like to have their say and then make. And then make the motion. Yeah. So maybe you can speak yeah. about everybody's yeah. viewpoint yeah. so yeah. everyone can hear it before the motions are acted on. No, no, I'm talking about that. Okay. Go ahead. I could actually. Okay. Would you okay. Like I'd like to go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm joining with. Yes, uh, yes. Oh, it's higher. I thought yeah. you meant yeah. deeper. I didn't think that. Okay. I'm going to join with Dick and support the school budget as, uh, as proposed. Um, I, I'm doing this, you know, with, with mixed feelings in the sense that um, we really do have a problem here in the town, but I don't think the school budget in and of itself is the, is the issue. The issue is, and I alluded to this when we discussed the town budget, is figuring out a way to balance our P&L. Uh, and how we're gonna do that going forward, I think is the critical issue. You know, I'd love to have influence over how things are done in Hartford, but we don't really have influence over, over that. So what do we have influence over is really where I think the conversation on a political level in the town needs to go. Um, and so, you know, as much as I would say to the school board, we'd we love you to come back next year and do a better job of keeping you know, this as tight as possible. I think they have done a great job this year of keeping it as tight as possible. So, you know, if, if most of your increases come from salary increases, then the, it's unfortunate. But what's the answer for the town? As I look around, and you know, I did a very informal survey of people I work with who live in Westchester, New Jersey, Long Island, you know, pretty clear, you know, more commercial-based towns have lower mill rates. Um, that's just the way it is. And no one's suggesting that Weston can turn into a commercial uh, uh, hub or get anything close, but again, little incremental things can make a bit of difference. Um, so, so I support the budget, but with the, you know, uh, the difficulty of trying to figure out how the town can move itself into a place where it starts to think about the new realities of, and I know declining enrollment is an issue and how that plays out, I'm sure the school board will adjust, but even with all of that, 
these issues about building up the revenue side are going to have to be met. That's I, it. I'm going to now build on that because, like Dick and Alan, I am approving this year's school budget, but I really have very serious concerns about the sustainability of very incre incremental cost growth that you really have very little control over. Um, even, you know, the, the per pupil cost <coughs> will increase because our fixed costs remain the same as, the, as enrollment declines. We've got unions, we've got unfunded mandates, you know, that are very, very significant. So I would really urge you next year, I would, if you cannot come up with new ways of, you can't come up with new ways of, of educating if they haven't been invented yet. So things that you have come up with. Um, intervention that may cost money up front, but if you can show us that years down the road, it may save us money. I love the idea. I wish it were still in the budget. If you have a way of making that work, I am all for it. Um, regionalization, as Steve has said. Um, you know, if at first you don't succeed. Um, using, once we decide what we're going to be doing with the space, using that space potentially in profit-making endeavors. I would really, really urge you to show us a change in the way you're thinking, not necessarily about how you educate the children, because until there is a proven, a new way that's proven, I don't expect you to do that. Um, and if you come to us with more expensive ways that will eventually save us money, I'm all for it. But, but please do come to us next year. You've got, done a great job of you know, cutting costs year after year after year on the small things. We, we really need to see a fundamental change next year. And um, I hate to be the bad guy, but I really do want to see at least some effort, if not the actual cuts. And even, even your uh, attempted at advocacy for the things that seem uncontrollable, but maybe given enough effort from schools around the, the state and the country, might actually change over time. Well, so I have a question for you. I hear what you're saying, and you're basically saying next year. Yes. And I'm saying, why not do it this year? Because I don't think that's fair. Because what I'm saying is I'm giving you a year that, that there's <coughs> nothing in this budget that shows that it should be cut. And what I'm saying is I believe that is going to be the case. There will be a 2% increment incremental necessity mm -hmm. costs next year, find some ways to increase our revenue or figure out where we can we can change the cost structure. But not this year. I don't think that's fair. It's like it's like punishing a kid because he thought about doing something bad. I'd like to comment it, based on what we're hearing, it sounds from this end of the table, it sounds like the first time we've been having discussions about declining enrollment and increased cost for students. We've been having this decided on the board just four years. So when you talk about you know things like uh, we have to look forward to incremental changes in revenue, as you're saying, Dick, because that winds up adding to our grant list or our commercial base. Well, you know what about further incremental decreases in cost? I mean, we seem to be kicking the can down the road. I even remember using that expression two, three, four years ago when it comes to the same issue we're at tonight. So the time upon us is now. You know, we're not, this is not giving someone a heads up where it's too late to impact this coming year's budget. We've been given the heads up for the last four years, and we talked at our last several meetings that it's a crisis time now as we approach in five, six years now with $25,000 cost per pupil. So, you know, I, I think, you know, philosophically, I'm in agreement with Michael. Um, I think, you know, he laid out all the reasons why we should do this now. It's not at all a negative comment on Dr. Palmer, her staff, the Board of Ed. They do an excellent job every single year, but we need to be slightly uncomfortable in the budget that we agree upon, much like our taxpayers, particularly the elderly and those who have not been granted in the private sector a cost of living increase like our teachers and our administrators get, to be able to um, sacrifice like they're sacrificing. And, you know, um, I'm not being inconsistent, as you said earlier, Melissa, in terms of that I go, away, uh, I go against what the public thinks in one area, I go in favor of what they think in another area. 
I'm just trying to be fiscally prudent and be make, making decisions on an individual cost basis, whether it's a library capital budget, which I think for all the reasons I said uh, is, a, is a good thing to do. But I think this, this uh, reduction here uh, is also the right thing to do based upon the reasons I just described for that. So before Michael spoke and as I had reviewed the budget and I had looked at the uh, extra $85,000 that was reduced, uh, we found out about today, my thought was including the $85,000 reduction, a reduction of $300,000. So we're not far off in, in where we're at. And why that number? Um, I, I think we need to get the increase under a million dollars and under 2%. And someone could say, well, gee, you're picking a number like, you know, we talk about equalizing the budget increase on the town side. Yes, I am picking a number. Because when we go through it, I, I sat through as an observer from the Board of Finance, I sat through the administrator's contract uh, review uh, a year ago. And you better believe that every moment in that meeting for days, including our, our attorney, we were talking about specific numbers to get to, whether it was 2% of a salary increase or X percent of insurance or X percent of a copay <clears throat> on the insurance side. So, um, you know, unfortunately, it comes down to picking a number that we feel is, is prudent and that um, I think will, you know, will set the tone today, you know, not a tone that says in the next year we need to do something. The time is now, it's been now for the past four years. So if anybody has a tape of last year's meeting, I can, that would be time to put my voice up there now and you'll hear my broken record speech once again on this topic. Um, I guess, Melissa, the point, it, it, it's, why not now? Because we've been talking about next year for quite a while. We've been talking about declining enrollment. Yep, you're right. When you joined, it was it was there as a big, as a big issue. We started talking about it then. We we've 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 talked about the board of ed pulling magic rabbits out of their hat and doing a fabulous job every time. Look at the RFP comes in now, right last minute. So we we save again. It's like poof, magic happens again. And, and yet still the structural change, the structural issues are still there. And, I'm, and I, I guess what I'm, I'm going to try to say it a different way to the Board of Education. I'm, I'm looking for a creativity and imagination in, in how we educate our kids. I'm looking for creativity and imagination in, in looking beyond what is a current paradigm. I'm looking for challenges to the status quo, and whether that is the third rail, class size, or whether there's administrative burden, or, or frankly, other areas which are totally outside my expertise. I know that the creativity and the imagination is there. I know solutions are there. What I, what I also absolutely know 100% is that what we have is not sustainable. Broken record time again, right? It's not sustainable. At the, the run rate we're on, the magic of compounding is gonna crush us. And, and so if we defer another year, so we say, okay, not now, next year. Well, we've just got that magic of compounding working against us. We're gonna go up another two-ish percent or so, and the next year we're starting again at an extra higher base. I, I, I just, when, when, do we, when do we say enough? When do we say, okay, now is the now, not next year? And I, we're not punishing anybody, Melissa. We're not, we're not yelling at these. These are professionals who, who know what they're doing and they're good, but I'm, asking, I'm challenging them to say, I, I'm looking for creativity, I'm looking for imagination, I'm looking for something more that, that blows through this structural norm, the list that Michael has and others, and say that this is, we can't keep doing this, this is not sustainable, can, can we go back and, and start? I'm not a big message sender, I, I hate the idea of sending messages, because that, that, that's, that's sort of a cop-out almost, you know, so I'm not gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you for 250 because I wanna send a message. I really do believe we should cut the budget Two, two fifty, three hundred. Pick a number, you know. But I think it's an important part because financially, it cuts into the compounding now, this year, right this moment, and helps us a little bit more next year. And I also do believe the administration, being that it's it's early April, has plenty of time to to sort this out between now and the start of the new fiscal year and the new education year, uh, and figure out how how you deploy those the assets that we've got. If you don't mind, I would actually like to comment on that. The no, first thing is you, you've said year after year, you have to think of, about a new, more creative way of educating our children. And I don't think that yet exists in public education. I don't 
think there is a new paradigm. Um, so given that it hasn't really been invented yet and we're a little town, I don't see us, you know, I, I give Dr. Palmer a lot of credit, but I don't know that she's going to do that. So my, what I'm imploring her to do is to look at other ways, and specifically on the revenue side, because I think the cost cutting, the very small cost cutting that Joanne has achieved year after year after year, which is incredibly impressive, just isn't enough anymore. Um, and that's what I'm saying. Don't, don't necessarily reinvent, I would say the wheel, but it's an imperfect wheel. Um, look at ways that you can deal with an imperfect way of educating, you know, the costs of educating children, and try to figure out how we can, how we can change that in a really new and creative way. And that's why I want to give, I want to send that message, and I want to hear for that message to be delivered. Um, and if, if you are saying, this budget is tight, we understand that, but we're gonna cut it, well then why not the selectmen's budget, and certainly why not the library budget since that money was actually there. So I don't understand why you're choosing the Board of Ed as opposed, to, especially to the selectmen's operating budget, which I, I would say, is equally tight um, and equally um, has not really focused on the revenues. I really, if, if you don't mind answering it. I can take a crack at it. I think, you know, it continues to bother me that there are both step and cost of living increases every year in, in teachers and administrators contracts. Uh, again, it's 80% of the budget now is trending toward higher as we cut costs elsewhere, and that's the higher percentage increasingly within the budget. Uh, and I, I, I wouldn't even be averse to uh, suggest that we reopen the, the, the negotiation with the existing teacher's contract. And that can be done. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, um, and it's not to send a message, it's, it's a pragmatic way to approach this uh, and, and, and go square on to the issue that is really driving the increase in our, in our school budget. So to your creative, so instead of creatively changing the way we educate, you want to take on the no, national I'm teachers? Not saying I agree with. I agree <laughs> with but Just, I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like. No, no. This is this is keeping the the same uh, 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 structure that we have right now for the moment while it's here. And like you said, Dr. Palmer, who's very creative and talented, can't do this tomorrow. You know, the commercialization of, of, of Weston or adding commercial properties is going to be years in the making, years. So the idea of producing revenue short of, you know, PTA donations, you know, I, I don't really see how that's going to ramp up as quickly as we need uh, our costs to be uh, contained. And so I'm, I'm actually not, I'm asking not, I'm not saying either or. I'm agreeing that with you, that we say, you know, the, the, the ability to educate our kids differently may not be available in the near future. So we have to change the way we pay for that. The, the existing uh, structure. And to me, you know, uh, it, because it's a union, uh, and I, again, it's nothing against teachers and administrators that would drive the educational program here, but if the rest of us here in, in Weston aren't, you know, guaranteed, well, not in unions, but are guaranteed wage increases every year, but yet we're being, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we have to pay the increases in terms of our taxes every year, well, you know, there should be some sort of, of, of equalization here. Can I say something before this becomes a his and her debate? Uh, just one, one, one thing, I just want to make sure everybody understands it, that Dave and I sort of have to bring this up. Because you said, well, you should just ask the teachers union to reopen their new contract and, and, and change that. Well, you would have to get their approval. And I'd like to just inform, not just Dave, but everybody here. I've been down that road. And I've been down that road at a time of the Great Recession five years ago when things were desperate in this town where a lot of people of all kinds spoke out against the Board of Ed budget and all budgets. If we could have had some relief at that time, and a lot of towns felt that way, and the word went out from above in the union leadership change nothing, reopen nothing, and that's what happened. One group that did do it in a small town in Connecticut, 
I understand uh, we're given a difficult time. But the rest of us, for what we heard and asked the question, is to politely say, no thanks. You sign the agreement, they're going to live with it the way it is. Even if you threaten to fire teachers. And, and there was always that threat, and a lot of teachers lost their jobs in the state. The people in the union didn't care because those would be the youngest and the least well paid. It's as simple as that. So just, just to make sure every, I, I think that's fair. I know it's an accurate statement from my, my Dick, point. Dick, how does, he make, does that make you feel good, what you just said? You described it accurately. Does that, is, should we just nod and say, you know, you're right, we should just, what should we do about that, if anything? And I know we can't do anything relative to opening up the contract today, we, but, we, we but it, it, you know we do negotiate every three years. Yes, we do. So, so. and that's when you do it. Okay, okay. it's so as simple as that. You're, so you're addressing you're, what? You're, you're not, not opening up the contract today, but you're not addressing. You're, that's you're, right. You're, but you are empathetic with mm -hmm. in general. Dave is saying, which is maybe we should be focusing on the. Yeah. We, we, we do, and we do that every three years with the teachers, and every three years with the administrators, and every three years or whatever it takes with the non-certs. It, it, that always happens, but, but the negotiations are based on what are other towns doing, and what did we do last last contract negotiation? And that's why we're in the soup that we're in right now. No, no, so no, I no. would argue that if you look at what happened five years ago, or you look at one town's experience, but you know contracts are renegotiated all the time. You know, for for oftentimes people come to the table where you think they might not have. So to have an example of one, uh, you know, I don't really think you know five years ago is is. is Certainly relevant to, to what's happening now in our town, and I would submit that our our crisis is much greater than it is today than it was five years ago. I'm not going to doubt that that, that we that we have been and remain in a difficult place. I'm just saying your uh, suggested solutions don't wash. In fact, that's not what happens in negotiations. Uh, you you have to work with the rules the state sets, and you know that at some point it's possible that one arbitrator is going to decide that. Mm -hmm. I've seen that too. Yeah. And you are ordered to accept that. And if you, and how does that person decide it? I'll tell you what the arbitrator's mm -hmm. award justification was. When you need one two out of three years, they looked at trailing settlements within our comparable districts. And that's why we look at them. Because we know what the argument would be and we know it will be accepted. So we have to take that into account. It, you know, at some point in the near future, there's going to be a change in the way our educational system works, and whether it's uh, to, 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 to save money, whether it's all the things we talked about, regionalization, renegotiation of contracts, something done you know, at, at, the, at the state level. You know, what I'm talking about now, I'm not suggesting it's a solution today or the only solution. We have many different solutions. Online education, raising the commercial uh, uh, you know, base in our town. It's something that I don't think anybody at this table or in this town can say that's off the table because it makes no sense because it hasn't worked in the past. So we're here trying to think of dramatic ways to get ourselves on track here toward a, a lower cost per pupil. And to me, everything should be on the table. We're asking our townspeople to sacrifice uh, in, in, in an ever increasing budget but we're not asking those who are driving the budget to even consider uh, uh, you know, a sacrifice. Well, well, so it's a little bit not fair because I think that if you look at where the Board of Ed probably started their process, they've made massive efforts to bring it down to a number. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the, the compensation component that is a systemic Oh, I understand that. Yes, I'm not you're right. at all about that, that nobody everything can, that yeah. the board and, and done to present a wonderful budget. Uh, it's, it's thoughtful, it's detailed, it's, it's earnest, um, but I, I don't, I think the time is now, and while we're waiting for the other things that have longer term horizons to, to go into effect, which I believe are going to be years from now, we need to, to uh, you know, uh, uh, be prudent in terms of, uh, of, the, of the incremental budget increases that we approve each year. So, so we're not going to solve this this evening. So, mm -hmm. David, you, you, 
Would you like to make a motion to reduce the Board of Education budget by $300,000? No. I would like to stick with Michael's number. Um, so that's Michael. Your number is 250. 237. Uh, now it's 250. 251, 191. Is the 85 now part of the, I'm not sure where that is. Is that the part of the request now? Or is it? Well, the, yes, it's part yeah. of the request. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> so you want to take it off that? Sure, please. So, so a 250,000, $300,000 $250, reduction off the 2.62%. Um, it may not sound like a lot of money for a $48 million budget, but you know, you're know you obviously well aware that this really is a fine-tuned budget. Um, our superintendent, our mm -hmm. director of finance operations, they certainly are uh, trying to come to all your monthly meetings, give you monthly updates. I think you know that certainly they run a pretty uh, efficient operation financially as well as educationally. So, um, it, it's a bit unfair, but I'm so I want to ask Dr. Palmer to just give me perhaps an overview. If we had say a three hundred thousand dollar cut this year, you know what would it mean? Just so you understand the cause and effect of our for every action is a reaction. Uh, it would just be helpful because <coughs> excuse me, why not, Dr. Palmer? I, I don't know. You know, I'm caught, catching a little bit off guard, but I still wanted to. Well, no, the same question was asked last week at the town budget. Yeah. Right, so but I, I wanted to reiterate. You're catching your uh, she can yeah, repeat it certainly. I'd like to reiterate it today, so just what your highlights are of the three hundred thousand dollars. So we look at how much revenue can we bring in and how much also can we um, reduce costs because they go hand in hand to the um, impact on the town. Uh, I think you'll recall from the other evening, probably um, generally speaking up to 100,000 we're going to be looking at uh, book accounts, uh, supply accounts, we're going to uh, take away from various accounts. When you start getting beyond that 102,000, you really, we're going to be looking at um, staffing. Um, in the district, uh, because the backbone of our district really are the people, if you look at the amount of uh, resources allocated uh, to operate a budget, uh, and it's labor intensive. We can't leave our children alone, uh, the younger children, and uh, so if you look at that, that, that whole scenario, because this budget is so tight, I believe if you look at the number of uh, line items that are red, I think it's uh, scores and scores of them that we have reduced to try to bring this budget down. We don't have wiggle room. There's no contingency in the budget for any reason. And part of me even bringing forward the reduction in adult debt, I know it's only 12, 13,000, but anytime that we can reduce anything, we bring it forward on top of the insurance. So um, beyond 100,000, we, uh, we will look to make reductions in staff uh, to make that up. And uh, we'll look across the board. Um, and I know, Dick, I know areas that you resources add to the value of our district and help us uh, maintain the quality of our district. <coughs> I think uh, that's, that's really fine. probably our approach. That's well, a good overview. I mean, again, our board's perspective is the staffing is, is, is adequate and uh, in line with what we need from the administration, <coughs> which we consider the backbone of, of the school system, or the operations of the school system right down into the classroom. Um, you talk about game changers, things like that. Again, as Melissa said, um, nice to talk. It's nice to fantasize a little bit. We, we, we don't know what, what there is in the future in terms of uh, significant cost savings. I, I don't think they're uh, anything that are, are currently apparent to us or, or out there. A blended learning will not necessarily save you money. It might be a better way of delivering an education to students. So, you know, again, some, from some folks or Board of Finance or other uh, folks might, might uh, make that equivalent to a, a saving money, but that's probably not necessarily the case. Um, 
Dr. Palmer, when she first came here, uh, did uh, talk about, and as a board, we could look at it again a little more, um, more specifically, uh, bringing foreign students, which could uh, possibly generate hundreds of thousands of dollars, not maybe more, but certain school districts around the country are doing that. Um, the board has, you know, we didn't really get into it deeply, but I think Dick was even on, on board at the time. There, there are pluses and minuses to that one. Uh, and that would be somewhat fundamental changes in terms of our, our school system and, and so on. So again, you know, revenue, uh, in, you know, revenue uh, sources we could look at uh, more specifically uh, going forward. But we do believe that, uh, I just wanted Dr. Palmer to comment that, you know, to say, you know, 300,000, half a million dollars, a million dollar cut, uh, <coughs> even a few hundred thousand will be very meaningful to us. Um, I, I'm not sure, the Board of Education wants to maintain, improve, as long as it doesn't cost you know, significant dollars, our educational product here. It's still basically, as far as I'm concerned, the only reason why people move to this town. If we start debasing it, well, I know it's Dickish again, but I, I still believe that's true, and I'm not sure how we would quantify that. But uh, I, I truly believe that. If that was true, then our, our property values would be up 25%, not down 15%, Phil. Come on. You, you can't just throw a statement out like that without facts. Let, let me say, if you debase the school system, Jerry, I'm not sure whether you even get your 113 kids coming to kindergarten next year projected. That's me. That's my opinion. That's the way I feel. Um, people come here because of the school. So we're always walking a very fine line of trying to make sure the tax taxes are as low as possible. We get it. Um, and since we have no commercial tax base to offset the Board of Ed budget, and we have a problem with the economies of scale, a 2,400 a student school system, it's always a uh, problems we're facing. Yes. Melissa's been on the board, she understands that as well. And it's that fine line we've, we've been walking for years, trying to maintain, improve the quality of the schools, uh, uh, keeping the budgets as low as possible, and, and, and you know, obviously uh, keeping the property taxes low. So um, I have confidence in our administration that they are overturning every rock and stone, doing everything to, to do everything they can to improve efficiencies and, and keep our budgets low. I, I, you know, Dr. Keating came here and, and brought an energy education course uh, it, it saved us millions of dollars, millions, Spotify, over the last few years. You would think every school system, certainly in our region, if not the country, would be embracing energy education. I, I don't think there's one. It's odd. They go to these school systems, do their pitch. It's strange, isn't it? So uh, I have full confidence in this, uh, in this administration. Um, ultimately, I believe it's a town decision on this. That's my opinion. Not a board of edu uh, ed decision, not even a board of finance decision. If, if we want to start hacking away at the board of ed budget, keep taxes even lower you know, than the 2%, 2.6%, we're you know, uh, advocating for the Board of Ed budget. It's a town decision. That, that'll be a fundamental decision at the time. And again, you know, I have no kids in the school system. Almost half of our Board of Education uh, don't have kids in the school system. So it's not a type of thing like that. We just know it's the right thing to do um, uh, to provide the best education to, our, uh, to the students, uh, the kids of this town, and being as mindful as we can to every dollar being spent. Can you some motions? Okay. Michael, do you want to make a motion on, with a number? Uh, should I use the number based on what came in at 4 o'clock, or should I use the number that came in before 4 o'clock? This, this, this number is this is the one that reduces it by the 85. Do you want to do that, Steve? Is that, is that I, I don't know what you're looking at. What, what, what Dick is pointing out is should we use the reduction based on 4 o'clock number, the one after? Um, well, you, 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 you're making a motion to reduce the budget by... From what, is my question. I think well, you initially started at 337 that. and right, they wanted to that. remove the 85, so The Board of Ed is saying this is, this is their number. Okay, so, so if I use that... whatever then, you're basing off of, it, right, that's, right. that's the Board of Ed's so number. So it's a proposal to reduce the budget to $252,000. Second the motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. 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 Motion fails uh, to uh, pass a op school op operating budget of forty-eight million six hundred three thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. So it's four to three uh, on Mike's motion um, and against the four to three in favor of the budget as proposed by the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item is to, I don't have the agenda in front of me, is 
is to uh, reappoint uh, the, the, the auditor. So I'll be looking for big things for me next year. Sorry? I'll be looking for big things for me next year. Let me, let me, when they come in, when they come in with a, when they come in with a three percent budget or a two and a half percent budget, and I'm looking for big things from you. I'm looking for you to hammer them and say, "Hey guys, like I've, I've given you my warning, and you know what? You, you, you did all the magic again, but I don't see any structural change. You're at one point seven five percent in."